My name is Justin Davis. I'm an interventional cardiologist from Imperial College London. And it's my pleasure to share with you a case we performed recently at uh, Imperial College. This study looks at uh, using IFR, instant wave-free ratio, in the setting of tandem coronary lesions. The patient we have is a 66-year-old uh, patient with a past medical history of hypertension, an ex-smoker with a family history of ischemic heart disease. Pre-catheterization, we know that this patient had a STEMI with LAD occlusion in 2012, which was stented, and a non-culprit lesion in the left circumflex artery. The patient was admitted for elective pressure wire assessment for the left circumflex artery. In this slide, you can see uh, a coronary angiogram, which shows uh, the patent stent in the left anterior descending artery. And you can see in the circumflex artery, there's two uh, discrete areas of atheroma. Overall, you can see that the uh, arteries have a very atheromatous appearance. And clearly, in such a case, we'd want to target our stenting to areas which are most likely to uh, give us physiological uh, gain. So, as you see from these pictures, uh, we've now labelled the potential stenoses uh, which we've identified from the first angiogram. The proximal one, we've labelled A, and the more distal one, we've labelled B. And from these, it's not immediately apparent from uh, the angiograms which of these is the most significant and which would potentially benefit most from stenting. Now, in this case, we're using uh, IFR, and we'll also eventually make a measurement of FFR as well. Now, IFR is a pressure-only uh, technology, which uses a pressure wire the same as FFR for assessment of the stenosis severity. The key differences between IFR and FFR is that IFR makes the measurements under resting conditions and doesn't require uh, administration of powerful vasodilator drugs. The measurements are made over a five beats and it's all automated uh, using commercially available software. This technology uh, uses uh, two different approaches to assess stenosis severity. The first is using a single cut point in a similar way to FFR uses uh, a cut point. And we know from extensive testing that this cut point with IFR is very, very stable, and uh, the equivalent IFR of an FFR less than or equal to 0 0.80 is an IFR of 0.89. So if you get a diagnosis of 0.89 or below, this would be consistent with uh, severe stenosis. If the uh, diagnosis uh, is IFR above 0.89, so 0.90 or higher, this would be uh, a less significant stenosis. Now we can use IFR in two ways. One is using a single cut point as I've described, or two is using a so-called hybrid approach. This hybrid approach uses a combination of IFR and FFR to diagnose which lesions uh, are warranted for um, stenting. So this is how it works. Firstly, we make a measurement of IFR. If the value is greater than 0.93, we defer the patients. So these patients don't receive stenting. If the value is less than 0.86, these patients are recommended for stenting. And in the mid-zones, between 0.86 and 0.93, these patients undergo uh, a measurement of FFR. So in the hybrid scheme, this is effectively the, the IFR grey zone. And in this scenario, we refer to uh, FFR, because of course this is where all the evidence base lies. Now using this approach, it enables us to get a very, very high classification match with IFR of 94% against FFR as a gold standard. Now, the great thing about this technique is it means that we can get very close levels of matching between IFR and FFR, but we can spare our patients from the unnecessary administration of adenosine. And systematically, we've found that this uh, approach, the hybrid approach, spares patients uh, from adenosine in around 65% of cases. So a minority of our patients now require administration of, of adenosine for a very, very high classification match with FFR. So in this case, what we've done is we've gone on to measure IFR, the proximal part of the vessel, 
then in between lesion A and B, and then distal to lesion uh, B. So the first measurement of, of IFR in the proximal left circumflex artery is 0.95. We then advanced our wire beyond the second lesion, and the IFR measurement here is 0.85. So this is a very significant IFR lesion. We then went on to measure FFR. So the FFR proximal to the left circumflex artery is 0.99. The FFR distal to the left circumflex artery is 0.65. So once again, we confirm using FFR that this is a significant lesion as well. It was quite clear from these baseline measurements using both IFR or FFR that the biggest uh, incremental increase in, uh, or biggest incremental step down in pressure gradient was from lesion B, the second lesion. And indeed, this is what led us to our decision making, and we went ahead to implant a stent uh, in lesion B. We then went on to uh, remeasure our physiology once again. And now you can see uh, on your screen here the IFR was repeated, as was uh, the FFR subsequently. The IFR uh, in between uh, le lesions A and B, so this is in position A, where we made our original measurement of uh, 0.95, was now 0.97. So essentially there's a little bit of variability here, but it's essentially a very, very uh, similar measurement. You'll see now after positioning the wire distal to where the stent was implanted, however, that the IFR had increased significantly to 0 0.96. So this is a very, very good result for our patient. We then repeated the same with FFR. And you can see uh, here that the FFR between the lesions was 0.87, and distal to the most distal lesion was 0.83. So what you can see is using both IFR or FFR, the results of uh, implanting a, a stent at the correct location in the vessel, so i.e. the location where the physiology is most profoundly affected by the stenosis, leads to a considerable improvement uh, in the physiology thereafter. And you can see that both of these indexes, physiology improves significantly. So what we've seen from uh, these technologies is it's possible to discriminate the, the stenosis with the highest amount of uh, physiological uh, consequence, so the lesion which is uh, causing the pressure to drop the most. So in conclusion we know that IFR can be used to perform rapid uh, assessments of uh, coronary stenosis in multi-vessel disease. We know that this can be used in non-culprit vessels at the same time the patient's admitted for an acute coronary syndrome. This has the benefits of potentially avoiding patients coming back into the cath lab for uh, investigation at a later date. We know that the hybrid IFR and FFR approach provides a very close match with uh, FFR-only uh, uh, strategy. So this is approaching 95% uh, classification match overall. And we know that uh, this technology can be used to assess both uh, the severity of coronary stenosis and help pinpoint which stenosis is in most in need of treatment, but also to follow the improvement of stenosis following a stent uh, being implanted.